I would like to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to share our work uh, to develop uh, this limbo stem cell therapy. My presentation will be divided into four parts, background, then development of the therapeutic candidate, followed by development of the outcome measure, and finally, uh, the uh, phase one clinical trial design. Cornea is the transparent part of the eye, is lined by the epithelium, and this epithelium is maintained by a group of adult stem cells that reside in the limbus, which is junction between the cornea and conjunctiva. In the basal layer of the limbo epithelium, and those layer harbors these group of stem cells. When they are deficient or lack of functional stem cells, that lead to a disease entity called limbo stem cell deficiency. The presentation of this disease varies based on the degree of the limbo stem cell deficiency. In partial disease, only a sector of the cornea and limbus is affected. In total limbo stem cell deficiency, the entire cornea is affected. Cornea transplant does not treat limbo stem cell deficiency. In eyes with normal stem cell function, the graph can remain clear and survive for a longer time. But in eyes with limbo stem cell deficiency, the graph usually fails within a couple of years. The cause of limbo stem cell deficiency could be due to genetic disorders or due to injury. And any injuries to the limbus can lead to stem cell deficiency which include chemical injury, continuous wear, or chronic inflammation. It's not until recently that uh, the first global consensus on this disease entity was developed. There are four take-home messages. The first is that the hallmark of the disease is the cornea epithelium uh, is replaced by the conjunctiva epithelium. The second is that a diagnostic test is recommended in addition to clinical exam. Third, autologous stem cell therapy is preferred over allogeneic therapy. And lastly, uh, limbo stem cell treatment is preferred over keratoprothesis, uh, which is artificial cornea. We also conducted a uh, meta-analysis on the outcomes of uh, limbo stem cell transplant. We found that um, autologous limbo stem cell transplant had a higher success rate and lower complication rate than did allogeneic transplant. And the long-term success rate is below 76%. The criteria of diagnosing and staging limbo stem cell deficiency and the outcome measure of any treatment vary greatly among all studies. And we concluded that randomized controlled clinical trials are necessary to compare the efficacy among different therapies. The first approved stem cell therapy was first reported back in 1997. In this first trial of therapy, a small biopsy was taken from the donor eye, which is the healthy eye. And these stem cells were then expanded in the dish and then uh, transplanted onto the uh, other eye, which is disease eye, and the ocular surface was restored. Uh, the therapy uh, was approved by uh, U the European uh, Medicine Agency uh, called Holoclear. There are several disadvantages of this therapy. First, it requires um, animal products. Second, it, uh, it treats mostly unilateral disease and um, it lacks a standardized outcome measure. And the success rate, again, um, was limited to 76% uh, with repeated treatment. So looking forward, uh, we uh, think that the therapy um, should be safe, which means that uh, it should eliminate animal products to avoid cross-contamination. It should be efficient, which means that the expansion of the stem cell population in culture uh, should allow for a higher success rate. And third, it should be very effective. That means a higher long-term survival of these transplanted cells.
So in the next session, we want to share with you how we develop a uh, new therapy using cultivated autologous limbo stem cells. We focus on the um, manufacturing process of these autologous cultivated limbo stem cells. We want it to be feasible, efficient, and GMP compliant and xeno free. To achieve that, we optimize the culturing uh, process by improving the following categories. First is the starting material, which means that when the tissue is biopsy, how do we uh, culture these stem cells from the biopsy? Uh, secondly, are the supporting cells, feeder cells any, that will increase the uh, efficiency of the expansion of the stem cell population? And third, uh, how can we ensure the culture substrate or the transplant substrate safe and effective? And the next, the culture media, how can we make it uh, xenobiotic free? And lastly, is the way that the cells are cultured and how can we uh, recreate the in vivo limbo stem cell niche. So after comparing more than 70 different culture methods and you finally uh, develop a xenobiotic free and feeder free culture system by uh, preserving the native stem cell niche during culture and then replacing the fetal bovine serum with human serum and also uh, removal of uh, the DMSO and cholera toxin during this process. Uh, next, uh, to comply with the regulatory requirement, we also develop uh, IPCs in process controls and also release criteria so that we ensure the quality of the uh, cultivated uh, limbo stem cells. Next, I'm going to talk about the development of standardized clinical outcome measures. Clinical presentations might not reflect the actual stem cell function, and a quantitative staging system is still lacking and needs to be developed to quantify in vivo limbo stem cell function and outcomes of the stem cell treatment. We utilize a very powerful uh, in vivo imaging, in vivo confocal microscopy. It can image all layers of the cornea, different layers of the epithelium, and the junction of the conjunctiva and cornea, which is the limbus. You first set out to look into um, the microstructural changes of the epithelium by imaging the central cornea and four regions of the limbus. Even in early stage, the epithelial cells become larger and the nuclei become more prominent. These changes, we call it metaplastic change, change um, we want to become more apparent in the intermediate stage and the cells with normal looking cornea phenotype are missing in the eyes with late stage. A similar picture is seen in the limbo regions. Uh, often we see an influx of inflammatory cells. At the same time, we also develop a quantitative clinical scoring system that takes into consideration of the extent of the limbo and corneal involvement, as well as the central involvement. And each eye will be giving a number to quantify the degree of the clinical degree. We are looking to 24 in vivo parameters of eyes with limbo stem cell deficiency, basal cell density, epithelial thickness in five locations of the ocular surface, central cornea, and four regions of the limbus. Cell morphology, central cornea subbasal nerve density, and nerve branch uh, scores. The basal cell density decreases in the eyes with limbal stem cell deficiency in the, both the central cornea and the limbus. The degrees of decrease correlate with the degree of the severity of the disease. Epithelial thinning also was uh, detected in eyes with the stem cell deficiency. In normal eyes, the epithelium is visualized by another in vivo imaging uh, modality 
anterior segment OCT, optical coherence tomography. In eyes with uh, stem cell deficiency, the layer of this epithelium becomes thinner and often absent in advanced stage of limbo stem cell deficiency. And the decline of subbasal nerve density was also observed. Again, the degree of decline has positive correlation with the degree of the deficiency. A, a molecular diagnostic test also is essential uh, to confirm uh, the diagnosis of limbo stem cell deficiency. We found that CURV-13 is a specific marker of the conjunctival epithelium. Uh, by sampling the ocular surface on the cornea, on the conjunctiva, and the cells can be subject to immunohistochemistry staining and K13 positive cells uh, on the cornea uh, could signify uh, limbo stem cell deficiency. So based on our finding, uh, we include clinical scores, basal cell density, subbasal nerve density, epithelial thickness of the central cornea, and molecular diagnostic test using keratin 13 as a marker could be used to diagnose and stage limbo stem cell deficiency. And this criteria will be used as outcome measure of our ongoing uh, limbo stem cell uh, trial. In this last session, I will introduce you to our phase one clinical trial. The purpose of this clinical study is to investigate the safety and feasibility, hopefully part of the also efficacy of our cultivated autologous limbo stem cells for the treatment of limbo stem cell deficiency. We also want to validate the limbo stem cell deficiency diagnostic criteria and quantitative staging system. This is a randomized controlled phase one clinical trial at a single center. 20 subjects will be recruited. The first five will undergo limbo stem cell treatment and the subsequent 15 will be randomized uh, in a two to one ratio into the stem cell treatment or the skull lens uh, treatment group. This subject will be undergoed uh, screening um, using the clinical grading system, the in vivo imaging and molecular dynasty test to determine the degree of their limbo symptom deficiency. If they meet the inclusion criteria, the biopsy will be taken from the donor eye, grow them in culture, and then transplant it back to uh, the other eye, the disease eye. The control will be a slow lens treatment group. You can contact our study coordinator through email or to me if you uh, need additional information and the trial is registered uh, at the clinicaltrials.gov. I would like to thank um, my teams who have contributed to the work that I have presented. Sheila Gonzalez is the project manager who um, developed the Xenofree free and feeder free uh, culturing system. Alan Pascal uh, is our clinical research center uh, administrator who um, helped us tremendously in the entire project. Uh, Alpha Stem Cell Clinic and the Stem Cell Center at UCLA um, have um, assisted us on the R&D pre preparation. Uh, Dr. Donald Kong um, is the director of the GMP facility and he has helped us greatly on the GMP tech transfer and also the GMP manufacturing of our product. The project has been funded from the infancy uh, by the um, California Stem Cell Agency as well as the National Eye Institute and uh, the other funding agency also contribute uh, to the beginning of the project. Thank you very much for your attention. Mm -hmm.